Okay, uh, first year aero students, uh, my name is Richard Green, I'm here to teach part of the course on aerospace called Aerospace Engineering 1. The theme that I teach is called Introduction to Aircraft Propulsion. So the intention is that by the end of these five lectures or so on this course that you will understand why particular propulsion types are chosen for particular aircraft types. Okay, it's not just about thrust, it's about efficiency, that latter um, aspect is very, very important indeed. Also, the intention is that you understand a bit about how these propulsion systems work. So, I've got some propulsion systems on the ground here. They're both um, test models. So, this is a turbojet test assembly. Turbojet is the simplest type of gas turbine for um, aircraft propulsion. It's only got one moving part. It's quite high technology, but only one moving part. So, there's a simplicity there. The technology is required to make it work, but the working principle is, uh, is quite straightforward. We've got low momentum air flowing in, and we've got high momentum gas flowing out the back, high, high, high momentum plus flow going out the back. So the rate of change in momentum is the momentum flow leaving minus the momentum flow entering. We apply Newton's second law, force is rate of change in momentum, so the force is equal to the momentum leaving minus the momentum entering, so we've got a force. And then we've got a reaction to that, another one of Newton's laws. So the thrust is in that direction. So if this turbojet was running, I'd be having to hold it steady to stop it accelerating towards me. Okay? So this is a turbojet, a very simple type of gas turbine propulsion system. The other thing I've got, the other propulsion unit is a propeller. Okay? Now the curious thing is, is that the actual gas generator for this propeller system is identical to the turbojet that I've just showed you, except that this propeller for the same fuel consumption will generate about five times more thrust than the turbojet. So that's the efficiency aspect of this. Propeller looks more complicated. Okay, this is the propeller. It rotates in that sense. So the flow would be coming towards me and far downstream the flow speed would be faster because of the action of the propeller. Okay? So, uh, we want a method of analysis that allows us to consider the propeller in the same way as the turbojet. Far behind the propeller, the flow speed is, is higher than far upstream of the propeller. Locally, it's no different. It's the difference between the far downstream flow speed momentum and the far upstream momentum. And then the thrust, in that sense, is equal to the rate of change of momentum, the momentum far downstream minus the momentum far upstream. That's Newton's law. So between upstream and downstream, the airflow, the gas flow, has accelerated. So that's how we apply Newton's laws. Now, this looks complicated. We don't want to have to deal with anything to do with the aerodynamics of the propeller or the processes in the gas turbine. We don't want to have anything to do with that, so we need a means of analysis that ignores what's going on in all the, in, in all the complex processes occurring for the aerodynamics and fluid mechanics of the propeller and the thermodynamics in the, um, in the gas turbine. And that will be the starting point of the course. So, if I make a sketch of a notional propulsion unit, um, that way, I don't care what this propulsion unit is, it could be a propeller, it could be a rocket, it could be a turbojet, it could be a turbofan. So this is my propulsion unit. I don't care what it is. So to do the analysis on this, what we do is we place it inside something that we call um, a control volume. Okay, the control volume is a real or imaginary um, surface in space and we base our analysis on the relationship of that control volume with everything around it, not necessarily inside it though. So we build a control volume around that propulsion unit and then all we need to consider is the momentum flow in and the momentum flow out. Anything that causes a force, so momentum in and momentum out. 
if the momentum of leaving is higher than the momentum entering, then there'll be a force due to that. Also, pressure causes a force, so whether this control volume surface is real or imaginary, we have to consider pressure. Pressure in, pressure out, and then the force due to pressure is the pressure multiplied by the area. So the pressure on the upstream side will cause a force in the downstream direction. The pressure on the downstream side will cause a force in the upstream direction. So our method of analysis is based on putting the propulsive device inside this control volume. Okay? So that's what we have to consider first. So before we can really get deeply involved with how a propulsion system works, we've got to consider things like fluid mechanics, one of the cornerstones um, of, of engineering really and, and, and aeronautics. So that's where we start. Okay. Very, very detailed notes for this are on the Moodle page for the course. So this is just an introductory clip.